Hello, and welcome to CI Know, the social network data collection, visualization, and analysis software brought to you by the Sonic Lab at Northwestern University. In this video, we will be showing you the advanced features of the import export function in the program, such as how to import or export multiple users and questions, how to import and export in other tabs, how to export in UCINet and other typical formats for social network analysis, and show the different templates present for each question when you import or export them. Essentially, you can use CINO as a web-based central data repository for your survey. The export slash import functions allow you to import any context slash data that you collect into CINO for analysis, or export it into other software for more in-depth statistical analysis or other visualizations. The way that the import slash export tab works can be seen in this example. Here, I want to input some of my data for a survey question to see I know. To do this, I first export the question that I have data for so that I can get a template for the question that I can open up in Microsoft Excel. Then, I fill the template with pre-existing data I've collected, save the worksheet, and then import it back into CI know for analysis. There are two major places to do data import slash export in CI know. Number one, under the administrative tab, and number two, under the visual analytics tab. Let's see how we can do this in these two places respectively. To start, let's look at the import slash export screen in detail. To access it, click on the administration tab, and then click on the import slash export tab. Here you can see that CI know allows you to upload photos to personalize your survey, and also allows for importing and exporting data in different ways. There's an option for metadata analysis, graph analysis, and UCINet format analysis. Next, click on Show Survey-Based Data to see more functions, such as the ability to import and export data of multiple contexts, attributes of nodes, and node groups and roles. Also here is the ability to import and export data for individuals for different questions, as well as how-to for all the questions at once. Now let's see how to use these multiple import and export functions. First, let's take a look at the multiple data types that can be imported and exported from. First, there's the metadata function, which is where all the information in the codebook is displayed. The codebook is a record of all the questions and data in the survey currently, and the metadata import and export function allows the administrator to see this codebook in Excel and then add large amounts of data and import it into the CI Know program. Then there's the graph ML function, which allows for the data to be exported in a graph ML format. This kind of format takes the visualization that you created with your data and puts it into words in order to actually describe the visualization. So here you can see on the spreadsheet each node and what kind of direction they have to other nodes. Exporting and importing in metadata and GraphML format is similar to exporting and importing questions. You can use Excel to input data for metadata and GraphML and then import it back in to view it on CI Know. Finally, there's the UCINet function which lets the administrator import and export the data in a DL format, which is used for text files and is compatible with UCINet and many other standard network software. Now, let's look at ways to import and export data away from the tab for it. This is actually a pretty easy process. Let's try with users first, because using the import and export functions to add or change nodes in the Nodes tab is easier than manually creating each node. To export users, go to the Nodes tab, and there, select the group of users you want to change the attributes of. Then, press the Export button on the bottom, which will create a .txt file that you can then choose to open an Excel spreadsheet, similar to how data is exported. In the Excel spreadsheet, you can easily change the attributes of multiple users in one group, instead of having to go through each one on the CINO program. When you are done, you can import the users back into the program by saving the changed nodes on the Excel sheet, and then selecting the import function on the bottom of the screen on the Nodes tab. This will update all the nodes that you just changed on the Excel spreadsheet, as well as add any new ones. Now, let's look at a way to import and export survey questions in an easier way than the Import slash Export tab. To do so, go to the Survey Design tab, and in there, select the question you want to export. Then click the Export button on the bottom of the screen, which will, like the users you exported, change the question to a .txt format which can be opened on Excel. As you can see, this differs from having to go through the list of questions on the Import slash Export tab. Then, when you want to import the question back, simply click Import on the bottom of the screen. If you want to export or import multiple questions at the same time, go back to the Import slash Export tab and click Show Survey Based Data. Here, you'll see an option for all questions, where it can export all the questions in a .zip folder, which holds all the question files so you can upload data for each one with ease. 
Then you can import the whole folder in the program in a .zip file. Also, when exporting all of the questions, you can add the files name by the question name, the ID number, or the sequence number of the question. The second way where we can export and import, as mentioned earlier, is through customized data sets from CINO via the Visualization tab. You will see some special functionalities here. What this means is that you have the ability to export only certain nodes and or relations of your choice, instead of having to choose only one or all of the questions. This is accomplished by choosing node and or edge types to export, which contain attribute and relational information linked to a specific question. For exporting via the Visualization tab, go to the Visualization tab on CINO. Here you will see tabs specifying the Ego Network and the Custom Network. Choose one that you would like to explore. If you want to export data without filtering through specific node or edge attributes, then click on the edge types you want and then select one of the export functions. Note that in the Visualization tab, you have the option to export your data as GraphML and in UCINet format. For a more customized exporting, select the Custom Network tab, and there pick the nodes and edge types you wish to retrieve from your survey. Here you can filter the node and edge attributes you want present when you export the data. If there is data or parts of an edge type that you want out of your export, then filtering through attributes can help with this. By choosing attributes, you ensure that only nodes and edges with specific qualities are exported and analyzed. Once you're done selecting the edge type and filtering through attributes, select the format you want the data exported in. Finally, let's look at how each question type has a different template when imported and exported. The reason that this feature is so useful is that it allows for the data to be organized differently and better suited depending on the question. What's even better about this is that CINO organizes these different templates for you, so that when uploading data, you won't have to manually reformat the template yourself. Now, let's take a look at these template changes for each question type. For choice questions, in order to show the responses to the question, the templates of the users taking the survey in the first column and the varying choice options in the first row. These responses are usually recorded as zeros and ones, with ones indicating what option they chose. It should be noted that in multi and perceived option questions, the template repeats itself. For multi option questions, this is because there is a separator for each answer type in the question that is input under the text fields tab. So for example, because the options under text fields are yes and no, then the template will repeat itself for these. The point of this is so that you can organize and export slash import the data that is specific to the answer type. So for this question, you can import directly how many times and who chose yes in the question. In the templates for perceived option questions, the question repeats itself for as many users who are taking the survey. With these separators, you can import the specific data related to each user. So if you want to import all the data related to the node named Edgar, then you would click on the upper left corner of the template where it says question, identify who that template is for, and then put in the results. Now, let's move on to how templates change for other question types besides choice. For rating questions, the answer that the user puts on the scale is what appears as the data in the template. To clarify, for a question with the scale from often to never, whichever rating the user picks will appear on the template as their answer. Similar to the choice question, the answer types appear in the top row and the different users taking the survey in the first column. The multiple perceived rating questions are also similar to the choice ones, with repeats for every option under text fields for multiple rating and for every user taking the survey for the perceived rating. Templates for number questions, which ask the user to input a number as their answer to a question, have templates that are also very similar to the choice ones. The only difference is that under answers, you can export slash import the specific numbers chosen by the users. This accounts for the continuous question type. For a duration chooser, the answers in the template will be separated with colons, which indicate the year, month, date, etc. For relational questions, the templates are changed by still having the users taking the survey in the first column. Relational questions ask users about the relationships with each other, and so the different choice options in the first row are replaced by whatever users the administrator puts under the Row Groups tab in the question. So, in this example, all the names belong to the graduates group that was placed as the choice options for this relational choice question. The template we're viewing here is for a relational choice question, and so like the template for a choice question, ones are placed for if a certain answer was chosen. Multiple relational choice questions also have a similar template, with the template repeating for as many choice options that are input in the Relations tab. Perceived relational choice questions also repeat for as many users taking the survey. Relational rating questions are similar to rating question templates too, seen in the examples here.
There are many features present in the Import slash Export tab, which allow you to export and import data in multiple ways. You see in the different formats that are available in the Import slash Export tab, such as GraphML and UCI.net. You've learned how to export and import data in different ways, such as under the Survey Design and Visualization tab. You've also seen how the templates change depending on which kind of question you're importing slash exporting. As said before, CIO Connect is a web-based data repository, and thus allows the administrator many options and how to view and organize the data. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching.